Okay, let's take a look at activity-based costing and activity-based management. First, some background. Recall that factory overhead is applied to production in a rational system systematic manner using some type of aver averaging. And there are a variety of methods to accomplish that task or that goal. And the methods involve trade-offs between simplicity and really what models reality for that particular uh, business situation. Okay, now firms produced, well historically firms produced a limited variety of goods and their indirect costs were relatively small. And this goes back some time in history. And therefore, allocating over, overhead cost was simple. You could use broad averages to allocate cost uniformly, regardless of how, they, how the actual indirect cost incurred. And if you think about that, if direct materials and direct uh, labor were the majority of the costs and the indirect cost were relatively small, then the degree of error you would have in co costing various cost objects or products, think about products as being the typical cost object, um, the errors you'd have because of using bad allocation methods was relatively small because the, the percentage of the total cost was relatively small. So if we used peanut butter costing, which is the idea of spreading cost evenly to all products, right? the end result is uh, we would have uh, overcosting and undercosting. Now, historically, that did occur, but it was relatively small. Today, if we use a peanut butter costing approach, uh, we may get some magnified errors compared to what we saw a long time ago in history. Okay, overcosting occurs when a product consumes a low level of resources, but the costing system itself self allocates a high percentage of cost to that cost object. And here they use the idea of a product, but it could be any cost object. Undercosting is the opposite effect, where a product consumes, or a cost object consumes, a, a high level of resources, but it is allocated a low number of cost per unit. Now, cross-subsidation cross is the idea that if you overcost one product, you must be undercosting another, and vice versa. The overcosted product absorbs too much cost, making it seem like it is really less profitable than it really is. And the undercosted product is left with too little cost, and it seems as if it was more profitable than it really was. So let's see if we can see an example. Cactus jelly makes regular and deluxe despined. Cacticorp sells equal quantities of each. And they regularly sell for $35 per jar and $46 for Deluxe. Both products have the same direct material cost. Deluxe takes twice as much direct labor um, due to the extensive despining requirement. Okay, so based on the previous assumptions, Cost could be allocated based on units as follows. And now you see from the screen, we've got total overhead cost of 20,000. We make 1,000 units each. And total overhead cost divided by total units winds up with a $10 overhead cost per unit. So if we apply them appropriately, what we wind up with is the only difference in cost um, relates to the direct materials themself, themselves and also the difference in the amount of labor. But the overhead is the same. And so it begs the question of, is that fair? Is that, does that really reflect reality? OK, and so now we get some bullet points that point out the three steps involved and how we calculate the standard unit cost and the deluxe unit cost. All right. Now, could it be costed differently if we used a different cost driver? Perhaps we would use direct labor hours. And if we do this now, you see that, uh, let's go through the steps now. I think it'll repeat that. 
we still have the same twenty thousand dollars of total overhead costs we still have the same three thousand of hours but now we allocate the overhead or apply it based on the cost per direct labor hour instead of per units so as a result we wind up with a seven dollar overhead cost per direct labor hour so when we compute the standard and the deluxe units we not only have a difference in material cost based on the product and labor cost based on the number of hours used right deluxe took two hours where directly the standard only took one hour but now overhead gets doubled for deluxe and as a result we've costed this product differently than when we based it on based overhead allocated on units okay you could even cost it using separate cost drivers and when we get involved with multiple cost drivers um, we are talking about activity based costing now the driver is typically some measure of activity and it can be any relevant or related activity number of patients in a hospital number of meals for a restaurant or in any uh, meal serving um, environment or business pounds gallon, gallons barrels some some physical measure can work out so think of a cost driver is is any any measure of activity okay and the next slide will will show cost allocation for our cactus jelly example using two new drivers together okay so we could allocate maintenance cost on based on machine hours so we would come up with the total machine hours between standard and deluxe we would figure out what the total maintenance costs were and then we would come up with a maintenance cost per unit three dollars and then we could figure out how much the maintenance costs are that need to go to standard and need to go to deluxe based on the number of um, units that were produced then we also could allocate shipping cost based on the number of shipments you understand the relationship there right standard shipments lots of 40 deluxe shipments shipped in lots of 10 total shipments we we come up with the total uh, um, activity which is number of shipments then we figure out or go get or accumulate the shipping costs we divide it by the number of shipments and we come up with a shipping cost per shipment and from there we can see that we can apply the shipping cost by taking the forty dollar shipping cost per shipment divided by the forty units that were shipped versus the ten that were shipped for deluxe okay okay now it'll point through those exact steps that we went through all right so what we see is that using activity-based costing or ABC we get a different cost per unit result as compared to using a the previous single driver methods right standard cost um, now has total cost of 29 and deluxe has 42 dollars and that's different from what we saw before so different costs can lead to different profits and and all we've really focused on is allocation and that's what ABC is about it's about allocating indirect cost to cost objects and here we see the differences uh, you can compare the standard units the gross profit under the various scenarios we looked at and then we can compare that also to the deluxe units under the various scenarios we've looked at okay so what conclusions can we draw each method is mathematically correct and each method is certainly acceptable for generally accepted accounting principles and certainly acceptable for management uh, management reporting purposes and management needs each method came up with a different cost figure which means we get a different gross margin calculation now the other side of the coin is we also get a different inventory uh, difference assuming we have uh, either work in process or finished goods on hand at the end of a period and again only overhead is involved total cost for the firm will remain the same it's just a question of how we are allocating the overhead to the different cost objects within the firm 
And until you get a strong handle on what cost objects are, just assume that cost objects and products are used interchangeably. Because in most cases, uh, the typical cost object is the firm's products. Okay, selection of the appropriate method and driver should be based on experience, industry practices, as well as a cost benefit analysis of each option under consideration. We certainly don't want to come up with a, a unbelievably accurate ABC model if, it, if the cost of maintaining it and uh, paying the people and the software to support it exceeds the benefit that we would likely derive from having that new information. Okay, now let's talk about a caution, cautionary tale. A number of critical decisions can be made using this information, such as uh, should we push one product over another, or should we drop another product? All right, now think. Remember that accounting for overhead cost really is imprecise, and so the best efforts should put for. In other words, you should come up with a cost that seems fair and reasonable. Okay, now if ever you're faced with the decision that says, well, we're using a single driver method or maybe maybe a step-down allocation method, but it's really not based on activities, uh, then there can be some rationale for selecting a more refined standard cost system. Okay, so if we have an increase in product diversity, um, that may be an indication that perhaps we need to move to a more refined costing system. Also, if we see that our indirect costs are greatly increasing, then the, the like, how do I say this, the degree of error we could see in our various cost objects, our products, um, is likely to go up as well. So increase in indirect cost may lead us to consider using a more refined costing system like ABC. Okay, Advances in information technology make tracking and working with an AB system um, um, a practical approach. Before the growth in, um, in, in, in databases and other tools, um, that made ABC less useful because there just was a huge computational requirement. Now that isn't so much the case with uh, the relatively low cost of computing power. All right, competition in foreign markets may give a hint that perhaps our um, our costing system may be outdated and causing us to be pricing products incorrectly. That may be a hint that ABC costing. Uh, an ABC costing initiative should be undertaken or perhaps considered. Now, let's talk for a minute about cost hierarchies. ABC uses a four-level cost structure to determine how far down the production cycle cost should be pushed. These four levels are, uh, and this is going from bottom to top, if you will, the unit level, so the output output level, meaning what what cost can we identify at the unit level. Batch level relates to costs that can be identified that relate to activities relating to the batch we are making. So a typical example would be setup costs uh, as we set up a machine to run a batch of products through it. Okay, Product sustaining level is the idea of that there are costs that are involved with keeping the product sustainable over a longer period of time. So we're moving away from the actual um, product manufacturing at the unit and batch level. We're moving to something higher. And then there are other costs that you consider to be facility sustaining levels. Okay, ABC is generally perceived to produce superior costing figures because we're using multiple drivers across multiple levels. Now the idea here is that the drivers are reasonable. They are the, it, you're looking for cause and effect as you choose a driver and the cost. Sometimes you can't get to cause and effect, but you ideally are 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 honing in on on drivers that are reasonable in light of the circumstances. Okay? So ABC is only as good as the driver selected in their actual relationship to cost. So I think I've made that point on the earlier 
earlier bullet above. If you choose poorly in terms of your drivers, you wind up with inaccurate costs. So the whole idea here is garbage in is garbage out. Now let's talk just for a moment about activity-based management. Activity-based management is the idea that we start with ABC as an integral part in our critical decision-making situations and then we use the data to help us make pricing and product mix decisions. I'll even say product rationalization which means which products do we keep, which ones do we drop. We also use the activity-based costing to determine what process improvements and what cost reduction initiatives we follow. Um, we can use ABC to help us design decisions and also to plan and manage activities. The actual act and these are the actual activities that drive costs. Um, now a warning sign that suggests ABC could help help a firm and this is sort of like why you would sort of like the earlier point I said where you look for you look for indications that an ABC initiative might be warranted is that you see significant over cost allocated using only one or two cost pools and that isn't the case in every environment in some environments one or two cost pools may be accurate that's more the case if the products all follow the same flow and they take essentially the same amount of effort and therefore uh, um, relatively the same amount of cost per units okay but if they don't look for significant overhead cost using one or two cost pools that may be a sign that ABC could be beneficial uh, if most or all of the overhead is considered unit level um, historically we know that really isn't the case perhaps an ABC initiative could result in more accurate costing products that consume different amount of resources when we see that if we're only using one or two cost pools very good indication that an ABC approach might yield um, better costing better better cost estimates for our products and products that a firm should successfully make and sell are consistently showing small profits that may be a sign that our cost system is outdated now we've got a, I think a few other bullet points here if operation staff disagree with accounting over the manufacturing and the marketing cost there too there, we may be ar arguing about the base itself the allocation base and I've seen that quite a few times in my uh, my work experience